So before I even start this video, if you end up liking this video, or you like my content in general, please make sure you go to my Twitch channel and hit that follow button and make sure you hit the notification button as well. I am streaming regularly now, regularly, at least every other day, but more than likely every day, at least once. So make sure you go ahead and go and follow that channel right now. Link down in the description below and will be, you know, displayed on the screen right now. Peace. What is going on YouTube? It is the Caranzo Vega, also known as iDoc Life here yet again. And this video should have been made months ago. And I'm talking about probably over a half a year ago. Uh, this video is going to be a follow up for a video I made actually two years ago that was talking about the solutions that I had for shadow play and video cards and whatnot. Uh, when, you know, dealing with the issues of audio synchronization problems and stuttering when you're trying to record your gameplay through shadow plays interface this is basically going to cover how to completely get rid of all those problems now i had those problems pretty much fixed for a lot of people with those solutions that i had back then but as we all know drivers update nvidia's geforce experience updates all the time and things change and i believe those problems have ripped their ugly heads again so i have another solution which should be more permanent than those solutions back then and this video has been in the making for a minute because a lot of my subscribers have asked me to make this video over the course of you know the past like year or two and uh, i just never got around to doing it but now i am so bear with me this is going to be something that's going to fix all those problems and most importantly is going to explain exactly why shadow play has those problems and it's just impossible to get rid of them for what shadow play is trying to do so first things first uh, i'm gonna let you know what you need you need obs studio i know before you snap and fucking click off this video after hearing those words because i'm pretty sure you've ran into millions of tutorials telling you to download obs or obs studio and whatnot and you've just heard it all before this video is going to be explaining the difference in what benefits through obs studio that you just don't get through shadow play and why it's better to use obs when you have an nvidia card versus shadow play now as we all know shadow play seems pretty much lossless when it comes to frame rate while recording and that is it's, it's just going to be undefeated in that all the way but i'm going to tell you why you should just go ahead with compromising some frames for what you get out of OBS. And I'm gonna show you how to minimize the frames that you lose because you will lose a few, but you won't lose pretty much, you won't lose really that much more than what you lose in shadow play. Now shadow play, you'll probably lose like two or three max, but here in uh, OBS, you can use, lose probably like maybe five, let's say five or something. That's what I go through. And this solution is for people who are trying to game and record on the same computer. So let's dive into it okay first and foremost there's a reason why i have monster hunter world as the background instead of my desktop right now and i'm gonna get to that a little bit later first and foremost let me bring up my toolbar here what we want to do is make sure our settings is intact to be able to record and whatnot without any issues like stuttering what causes stuttering a lot of the time is windows 10 itself and it's built in dvr so we're going to go into the settings of windows 10 or you could hit this gear right here i don't even know why i typed it i can just hit the fucking gear what's wrong with me but anyway we're going to go into here and then go down to gaming where the dvr is now it used to be in the xbox app but now it's in this this area since one of the big updates from windows 10 and we're going to go into dvr and make sure this is turned off record and background while playing game turn that shit off turn all of this off if any of this is on just turn it off game bar turn it off it really doesn't hinder anything but i just don't care for game bar so i just turn it off anyway get rid of that yada yada bam and we're out next thing we're going to do is go back into our toolbar it's going to keep disappearing because i had this game running and we're going to bring up nvidia geforce experience this is where we control the settings for shadow play so get rid of that use that now we're gonna go in here in our little gear and settings and we're gonna turn this off now i'm not gonna turn it off because i'm using it to record this video because i can't record through obs studio and demonstrate exactly what you need to do in obs studio at the same time the program won't allow me to do that so i have to use something else so i'm using shadow play for this so i'm gonna turn this shit off bam well i'm not going to but you're going to turn this off just click it and it'll shut off and then we're done with that exit out of that now we're ready to get obs studio if you haven't 
uh, downloaded this program already, which I'm pretty sure a lot of PC gamers or recorders have at some point. If you stream, I'm pretty sure you have this on your PC somewhere. You're going to want to go ahead, go into Google, and then just basically download the damn program, OBS. I'll just leave a link down in the description below, and you can go ahead and uh, go ahead and download it from there. Next, what we're going to do, once that's downloaded, set up and all that, <laughs> don't mind that picture right there. It was a reaction <laughs> picture for a thumbnail. But we're going to go ahead and open up OBS Studio. It should be on your desktop. I put mine as a, a pin on my toolbar, but it should be on your desktop somewhere like, bam, over here. Like mine's right there. Anyway, bring that back up. Now we have OBS Studio. It's going to look a little bit different than mine if this is your first time ever using this program. So basically what's going to happen is, let me get rid of this because I'm going to go over that a little bit later. Basically, what's going to happen is it's going to just be blank and you're going to need to set up everything. First and foremost, what we want to do is set our scenes. So you go down here and right click in a free space and click add. And you go ahead and name this scene recording or whatever you want to name it in regards to your recording. I've already named mine, so it's already set. We're going to come back to sources later and then we're going to go into settings. You can either access that right there or up here in file and settings. And open that up. The first thing we're going to go to is audio. We want to set that up properly. So our audio needs to, of course, be endowed with whatever we're using to hear the game. Whatever you're using to hear your computer, your sound, whatever, make sure that's set here, whether it be your speakers or your headphones. Like I have my headphones going into my Blue Yeti, so it's technically a headphone. I can go ahead and set that here. Bam, that's what I use. And then my microphone, of course, the Blue Yeti or whatever microphone you're using. Next thing we do is go down into video and set our resolution. Now, I set mine 1920 by 1080. You could be at a 720p. You can either even set it higher, 1440p or 4K. Whatever you want it to be set at, but I go with 1920 by 1080 and make sure our output is the same. We want that to be the same, okay? Well, in some cases, you can set it to 720, but just make it the same. Trust me. Then we're going to go down here to downscale filter. Because we're not downscaling at all, they're both the same resolutions. There's no reason to go down here to any of these settings and make sure it's set to bilinear. It's the best pretty much for what we're going for. And then we go into our frame rate values. Now, if you're playing a game that's capped at 30 or you're capping your game at 30, you go ahead and set that to 30. If you're not capping your game, set it to 60. God damn it, go back to 60. There you go. Set it to 60. And then we go into our output. This is where all the fun happens. This is where the major difference between uh, OBS and Shadowplay comes into play. Now, when you come in here, it's going to be set to simple. We want to get rid of that. Fuck that. We want advanced. We want to use all of our stuff. This is the beauty of OBS. We have accessibility. And if you're using XSplit, you even have you have even more. But OBS, I feel, is the best out of all of that because it's just it just works, man. It just works. But anyway, we go down to recording after we set this to advance and we make sure we uh, create a path for our files and make sure it's a good, you know, good path that has a lot of space on it because these files are not going to be small they're going to be around the same size as those shadow play videos so set that up i have it on my f drive i have it already set up recording the obs and then go to recording format what works best for me is mp4 and what i think is the best is mp4 for colors and all that and it doesn't really crush the quality of your video at all really so go ahead set that up now mind you when you use mp4 if you or in like an environment that constantly has like power outages or your computer's always shutting itself off somehow or you're just having power problems. Yeah, MP4 might not be for you because if you're recording and everything shuts off on you, you're not going to be able to recover that file. It's just going to be a corrupted file. You won't be able to like it won't just cut off where your computer shut off and save the rest of that file or have all that file saved. What formats do do that, however, is MKV and I believe FLV. I'm not sure, but I know MKV does uh, keep track of what you record up to the point where, say, for instance, your power went out. It'll keep all that that it recorded before safe. But I never have to run into those problems and a lot of people don't. So I normally just set my shit to MP4 and going into audio tracks. This is just something that I do because I love filtering my mic sounds 
a lot of the times I have background noise going on when I record and I want to be able to get rid of that shit and an, uh, an external program, you know? So what I do is I create three separate tracks. Normally it would just be one track or I believe when you just start off, it's all six of them, Mark. I'm not sure. It's either one or six. But what I do is make three separate tracks. I set one track up for game sound and microphone sound just as a reference and whatnot. Say, for instance, I just felt like I didn't need to edit or put a filter on my mic for that video. Then I can go ahead and just use that with one of those tracks just straight up upload it to YouTube or whatever. If I ever wanted to do that, which I probably never would knowing me. And then track two, I would set to game audio. And then track three, I was set to microphone audio. The beauty of these tracks is that they're alone. They're not intertwined. You can set the audio levels, whatever you want, how you want that specific track to sound can be set on its very own. And I love that about this program. And we're going to get more into that a little bit later on how to set that up within your actual recording because this is only one half of the story. Now encoder, this is another beauty of having an NVIDIA card or even an AMD card. Now I believe NVIDIA's codec is the absolute best for performance and uh, performance in visual ratio or however you wanna call that. I believe it's the best for that shit because it, it really hardly hinders anything in your computer. It doesn't really hit the frames like that, none of that. Majority of what you're going to have to worry about as far as hitting your frames is the actual program of OBS. And it's not that bad with the way we're going to set it up. So set that to NVENC, which is the uh, codec that your actual NVIDIA card uses. Now, I have a 980 Ti, so it uses NVIDIA's codec. So I'm going to need this. Now, the best quality one is X264. But that is completely dependent on your CPU. You need a seriously good CPU in order to use that and be able to have a good gaming experience. And even if you have a seriously good CPU, it still is going to hinder it. This is mostly for people who are gaming at a very low resolution or they're using a different computer to record their gameplay. And that will require like a capture card on that computer. And I have that set up and that's actually what I use when I'm using both of my computers. But if I'm only using one computer to record and game on the same PC, then I use this setting that I'm showing you right here. So make sure you set that to NVENC. And this you don't have to worry about. And these are just the warnings that I already told you about with MP4. Now, this is the beauty. This is the major difference between Shadowplay and OBS. And it's how you control your bitrate output. Now, you have options here that you do not have in Shadowplay. Shadowplay only records in variable bitrate. And what variable bitrate is, it's a bitrate that basically fluctuates as you record it adjusts it adjusts itself as you record whatever you're recording on screen and i understand why nvidia uses that in their cards i understand why but i wish they would still have an option for a constant bit rate which we're going to get to in a minute but i understand why they use it because it's really seamless it doesn't affect your frames hardly at all and that's what makes you know shadow play so notorious or so so valued for not hitting your frames but you being able to record it's beautiful so yeah, that's what that is for. And you have that option here as well. But anyway, what we're gonna wanna do is set our shit to CBR, which is constant bit rate. And the beauty of that is we don't have to deal with problems that can persist from variable bit rate, which is audio synchronization and sometimes stuttering when you're trying to edit that actual video file that you just created. So make sure you set this to CBR because that's a constant bit rate. It hits whatever target you set it to as far as number and it sticks with that number completely throughout. The only downfall to that is that it uses more resources than what variable does, but it's not that bad at all, especially when you have a codec like this. So we set that up and then our bitrate number, I like to set mine anywhere between 45,000 for recording. This is way different on streaming. Don't ever set your shit this high for streaming. But for recording, I like to set my bitrate anywhere between 45,000 to 60,000. That's where the bread and butter is and that's where the quality is. You do not want to make this shit too low with that NVIDIA codec because it will look absolutely atrocious as far as quality. So anywhere between 45,000 to 60,000, you can go higher, but know that you're going to be using a lot more file size if you go any higher than that. So now keyframe, this only really matters in streaming and whatnot. We will set this to two. I believe it's two for both YouTube streaming and Twitch streaming. 
But as far as recording, we don't have to worry about that because we're not streaming. So set that to auto, which is zero. Now preset, I set mine to high quality. Profile can be either main or high, it really doesn't matter. Level, auto, everything else, we just leave the same. And that is that, that's all you have to do there. Set it up just like this. So I go ahead and apply that, bam. Now we're at our blank OBS, everything else is set up. But I'm gonna go through one thing and it had to do with the audio tracks, our mixer. All right, this is our mixer. This controls what we hear on the desktop. And of course you can see my mic meter is just moving because I'm actually talking. So what we're gonna wanna do with this is right click any one of these and go to advanced audio properties. This brings up our audio properties. So this is where the tracks come into play. Now, as you can see, I would normally have, uh, oh no, it's correct, it's correct. My mic and my desktop audio. For track one that I went through in the settings, I use both of them. Track two, I use desktop audio exclusively, which would be in turn gameplay audio exclusively. In the third track, I use mic audio exclusively. The rest, I don't need it all. You can have up to six tracks, but I only use three for those purposes because I can edit each one of these tracks separately without having to hinder the overall sound of the game. And if I end up doing that, what I do in my editor is I just delete this track right here. If I find any errors within these audios right here and I want to uh, basically fix them up or whatever, I fix them up then delete this one. If I don't find any errors and I just like that audio, then I just leave it how it is and then render that out. But that's for that. All right, so now what we want to do is go into our sources and actually put the game into the program. So there's a reason why I have Monster Hunter World up right here so I can actually show you something and show you how it works and how the game pops up and whatnot if you don't know that already. So we go ahead and right click down here and you have options right here. You can either use window capture or you can use display capture. And what I find the best is game capture. The play, display capture works uh, best if you want to capture your desktop and all that and everybody see all that shit uh, within the same computer. So what I use is game capture because all I really care for people to see is my actual game unless I'm doing something special or like a tutorial or whatever. So game capture. I already have a couple set. Bam. And because I have this in the background, I don't have it active. I'm just going to leave that on full screen application. And I'm going to activate the game by clicking in the game. Monster Hunter World. Going back out. Going here and there it is, it's displayed right there. And your audio sound should be pumping out through here and it's not for me because I actually muted the game and I'm gonna unmute that. And as you can see, the sound is slowly going up. It's real low right here and you can use this dial to set where you want your sound at. And I love that because you don't have these options in shadow play. And that's basically it, when you're ready to record Oh yeah, and another thing, when you're ready to record, of course, your CPU usage. They give you a little monitor right here that you can use. Your CPU usage is beautiful. You know what I'm saying? When you're ready to record and you're in game and you're actually playing the game, of course, your CPU usage is going to go up. Now, for those of you who have uh, skepticism as to how this is going to affect your frame rate or affect your PC usage, here's how you can stop that. Seamlessly, you can make this program similar to shadow play in a sense. It's not going to be as lossless as far as, you know, keeping your frames exactly where they should be as if you never even recorded anything. It's not going to be on that level, but it's going to be something similar. What I do if I just want to record something and don't have to worry about looking at the other screen and whatnot for like updates and whatnot from, I don't know, my stream or whatever. Since we're not streaming, we don't have to worry about that. What I do is just right click and disable preview. And that pretty much gives you so much more uh, headroom when it comes to CPU usage. And you can just place this on another monitor and keep track of your mixer uh, audio ratings and whatnot, your mixer levels and whatnot, and then just get the game in, baby. And that's it. And pay attention to your CPU usage, which should never really go high with the way we're recording this. And we're good. You're good to go. This is my solution and this is what I use exactly to record my gameplay files when I'm using just one rig to play the game and to record. Now, if you have any questions, please leave your thoughts down in the comments below. Make sure you like the video if you like the video. This is the Grand Toe Vega. Please make sure you go and follow my Twitch channel. I'm trying to get to Twitch affiliate level and I've been streaming pretty much every day uh, since I came back onto Twitch, which has been about a month or so, and I'm at like 32 followers right now. I need to get to that 50 so I can get that affiliate. 
and get those little benefits that you get from that. And then I'm going to try to head for that partnership afterwards. But please, if you can, make sure you go down the description below and go and follow my Twitch channel. If I helped you at all, leave that like, comment, do all you need to do. This is the Grand Tovega, also known as iDoc Life. And I'm out. Peace.